Greetings. The title of this lecture is After the British Conquest. After the military conquest of New France in 1760, the British faced a thorny problem of governing approximately 70,000 French Canadians who embraced political, social, and economic ideas seemingly incompatible with British culture and politics. The French Canadians were unfamiliar with the Anglican State Church an active newspaper press, the English civil and criminal court system, and representative government. The British took over Quebec, expecting that French Canadians would realize the superior ways of British culture and government. But with all the decisions concerning the governing of Quebec, there is an important question. Can a conquered people be free? During the final years of French rule, the Quebec economy was weak, Quebec City was in ruins, and over 1,000 homesteads along the St. Lawrence River were destroyed by British troops in the weeks before victory on the Plains of Abraham in September 1759. For years, commentators had reported that France clearly failed to make New France a profitable colony. The French Canadians placed too much stress on the fur trade, which drained the colony of skilled labor. The colony never produced sufficient revenue in ratio to investments by France. The cost of transporting goods was excessive. There was a chronic lack of coinage, and much of the paper currency still circulated after the conquest. To avoid further damaging the economy, the British government needed to redeem these bills at the best possible price, a process that took many months. British press reports were hopeful that they would benefit economically, but others in political circles doubted Britain's ability to make Quebec a prosperous member of the imperial community. More hopeful and realistic, one possible strategy was to weld Quebec into New England economic system. From 1760 to 1763, Quebec was ruled by direct military occupation. But many accounts suggest that the British ruled with admirable tact and fairness. For example, the British allowed the French Canadian people to keep their firearms. Certainly, Britain had a better historic record than France on the theme of liberty, although many Americans would soon disagree. As the British set out to govern Canada, they faced major problems. The French Canadians were Roman Catholic, and their society had been organized by feudal absolutist rule. In contrast, the Protestant British had a constitutional monarchy. Simply put, the British were in control of a land of French Catholics who had no understanding of British politics and traditions. The Treaty of Paris officially final, finalized the transfer of New France to England and now London had the task of marrying two contrasting cultures into an administrative whole. Historian Philip Lawson points out that the public debate in Britain showed little appreciation of the intricate policy decisions required to ensure the security of an alien people under the British crown. Initially, London officials, official concerns went no further than rudimentary accounting related to the cost of maintaining Quebec garrisons. However, the British press addressed the issues of patronage and trade that were central to imperial expansion in the 18th century. The proclamation of 1763 resulted in the creation of the province of Quebec and the making of Indian territory a mass of land north and west of rivers draining into the Atlantic Ocean, excepting the Hudson Bay Company land. No settlement was allowed in this territory and trade was only permitted with a license. The Indian Territory 
was pretty much a closed reserve under the control of the imperial authorities. The proclamation of 1763 also provided a governor and council to be followed by an elected assembly, which was a foreign idea for French Canadians. In the fall of 1763, the Gentleman's Magazine, a monthly magazine published in London, presented a long article listing the necessary skills for the governor of Quebec. The governor needed to be a good soldier given repeated Indian hostility. At the time, Pontiac, an angry Ottawa chief in the Detroit region, led United Indian tribes in attacks against British garrisons. The future governor also required political skills to mediate problems with other colonies in North America. Certainly, the governor could not act as a petty despot. The magazine re recommended James Murray, who was a successful soldier, a member of the landed gentry, and someone who spoke French well. Indeed, the first governor of Quebec was James Murray, who hoped to assimilate the French and have them adopt Protestantism and English law. Most of the political and military elite had left Quebec and sailed to France. The British wanted the remaining French Canadians to stay in Quebec and be loyal subjects rather than depart to some French colony. The Catholic clergy found Murray to be a fair leader he packed the council with like-minded people who were sympathetic to the French Canadians. Later, some English residents accused Murray of being too generous for, with the French. The British press showed no interest in the issue of assimilation, and there are two possible reasons for this omission. First, demonstrating their plain ignorance of Quebec the British lacked an understanding of the French Canadian population and how difficult it would be to legislate Quebec without sizable numbers of British settlers to, to get the region on a good British footing. Second, the British were confident that their culture and government were superior to the French model. The British expected that the French Canadians would recognize this was an opportunity to, to be liberated from the repressive features of French absolutism. In these years, Britain experienced industrial growth and successful commerce contrasted to the financial difficulties that France faced. In 25 years, France would experience the pain and suffering of further economic chaos and a murderous and tragic revolution carried out by tyrants. Assimilation in Quebec was the goal, but it could not work. The overwhelming majority of the 70,000 French Canadians resided in rural regions. With little exposure to British ways, the people continued to embrace their traditions. They were a conquered people who wanted to be left alone as much as possible. Anxiety was real, especially for those who were aware of how the British had forced the French Acadians out of their lands and homes less than 20 years earlier. Having more English settling in the region could advance the assimilation process, but few English were willing to settle in Quebec, particularly since the 13 colonies not only offered better climate, but also greater economic opportunities. Relocating to the often cold St. Lawrence River Valley where French culture dominated was not appealing. The development of representative government also appeared dubious. 
In fact, there were no elections held for assembly due to the small number of English settlers. Another drawback was the Test Act of 1673 did not allow Catholics to hold public office. However, Murray was sensitive to French Canadian concerns, and he did some rule bending to assist uh, Quebec Catholics in acquiring a bishop for the colony. Taking a practical position, Governor Murray tolerated Catholicism and even allowed female and male orders to function. In the mid 19th century, French Canadian historian Francois Xavier Garneau viewed the French, the British conquest of Quebec as a tragedy, the first of many sufferings and humiliations at the hand of, hands of the English. Decades later, historian Benjamin Soult disagreed with this pessimistic interpretation and argued that British liberties offered greater opportunities for the French Canadian people. They were a conquered people, but they flourished under British rule. In the 1760s, agricultural production increased and marriage and birth rates rose significantly. As for the English speaking population, it remained tiny. Five years after the military defeat of the French, there were only 500 British residing in the colony. An increasing number of French Canadians became more comfortable with the British who, in the words of one historian, quote, provided a security against the Americans the colony had never had and governed without the unappealable authoritarianism and corruption the French often brought with them. The French Canadians had been conquered, but the British, despite their overconfidence, displayed fairness and notions of liberty when they interacted with French Canadians. Thank you.